So now in this video we're going to do mostly multimeter measurements of capacitors, but we're going to be talking about capacitors in general. So in any case, the measuring them is pretty straightforward, but uh, there are some things to it. First off, for this particular meter we don't have to do anything when it comes to moving the red probe. We have it where it almost always is. This meter measures everything but high current with the red probe right there. So odds are you'll be leaving it where it is uh, with this particular meter. Unfortunately, I don't think this meter is really made anymore. Uh, I think you have to just get one that just hasn't been sold yet or a used one if you want this particular meter. It's the D Myotech Smart V. And uh, let's see if I can zoom in right there. So D Myotech Smart V. So in any case, I don't uh, link this anywhere because uh, Amazon doesn't sell this other than third party probably. So in any case, let's get to the measurement. So before we measure actually these particular capacitors are well marked and uh, there we go, the lighting actually pretty good on that. So you can see there it is a thousand microfarad and basically what that means it tells you how much charge it holds per volt. So if you have a 100 microfarad capacitor and you charge it to one volt you will have one tenth of the energy stored as this one stored uh, charged to one volt. So it's the capacitance times the voltage you charge it to. This has a 25 volt max and this side needs to be more negative. That's why there's that dash there and the shorter lead. This is polarized. It's an electrolytic capacitor. Not all capacitors are electrolytic capacitors or uh, polarized and uh, the larger value ones though are almost certainly polarized. It's rare that you have a really large value capacitor that isn't polarized. So in any case, they're nowhere near super capacitors though, but they're relatively large value capacitors. And so measuring them is pretty straightforward. We just uh, put the probes across them. And since this is an auto ranging meter, you kind of have to wait for it to get its range and everything. But there you can see it says a 978 microfarad. So, almost a thousand, and you shouldn't be surprised if a capacitor is uh, quite a bit off from what its rate of value is, maybe 20% or something, and uh, uh, so hopefully it's not that far off, but it does happen. They're not always accurate, but these aren't too bad. So now, what we're going to do, we just measure them. That's pretty straightforward. They're both one thousand microfarad and basically that's what we got so now we're gonna put them in parallel so if you need more capacitance if you put them in parallel their capacitance just simply adds up and uh, they are both in the same two rows now and so we expect spot on pretty much twice the capacitance if we go across them again it's auto ranging we have to sit and wait a little while and now you'll notice instead of the mu symbol, the micro, now it's MF for millifarad. So this is two millifarads. And capacitors, as we saw, 1000 microfarad is the same as one millifarad. But for some reason, they really like to label capacitors in microfarad. So 10,000 microfarad, 100,000 microfarad, instead of saying, you know 10 millifarad or 100 millifarad for some reason they like to stick to the microfarad but this meter goes to the millifarad and it shows you basically 2 millifarad so that's when they're in parallel pretty straightforward their capacitance just adds up and so you can charge them up to uh, whatever voltage you want these two are rated for 25 volts so you have to start stop at 25 volts I also have a 1000 microfarad capacitor rated for 35 volts if I put it parallel with one of these I'd have to stop at 25 volts and uh, so just be aware that you stay below the lowest rated value of voltage so now we come over here and we're gonna put them in series so the negative side of that one to the positive side of this one and now when you put them in series an interesting thing happens you actually get a fraction of the voltage and you really want them to be equal value capacitors at this point uh, when you put them in series they don't have to be equal in parallel but it's pretty important to, that they're equal value in series there you can see it's half the capacitance of one of them it's about 500 microfarad 
if we put another one of these uh, 1000 microfarad capacitors in series and measured it, it would be a third. So it would be about 333 microfarad in that range. Of course these are slightly lower so it's not 500 microfarad they're slightly lower than 1000 microfarad so it's a little bit lower than uh, 500 microfarad with the two of them in series. So the reason why you put them in series though they split up the voltage. We saw that they were rated for 25 volts so technically we could put 25 or uh, 50 volts I mean so twice the voltage across them but it's going to store half the energy of a single 1000 microfarad capacitor charged to 50 volts but we have the 25 volt rating for each of these as long as they evenly charge that's another problem they rarely evenly charge so you need some safety margins but if you can evenly charge them we could put 50 volts across here but that 50 volts is only going to store enough energy as if it were a single capacitor of about 480 microfarad so now this meter does really well with large value capacitors so I have here the uh, annual for it and you can see it goes up to 1000 micro or millifarad I mean according to this and so that's one tenth of a farad and that's pretty large uh, resolution is the next number over so that's the D myotech one now this other one it's written in uh, I don't know if it's Taiwanese or uh, whatnot that uh, came from Taiwan they also have the English uh, manual online so looking at the English manual that also says resolution and then that says capacitance just like the one we just saw but you can see this one goes up to 20 millifarad so that's only a fifth of the uh, capacitance we'll look at that meter coming up and also that meter measures under frequency but this is a 4.7 picofarad uh, capacitor so the meter should say uh, it doesn't even go into the picofarad range it stays in the nanofarad range so it should be uh, 0 0.0047 nanofarad and I'm measuring voltage which I should not be doing so there we go I have uh, capacitance now and uh, let's zoom in so you can see right there NF and so it should say 0 0.004 when we measure this if it were accurate but as you can see it is nowhere near accurate so let's get the LCR meter which was that second uh, pamphlet I showed you there it is and so with this one we can turn the uh, power on and it's set to auto measure and so you can see right up there auto right when you turn it on you can just plug a component such as a capacitor this is not polarized and uh, so it doesn't matter which lead we put into there and uh, so look at the display I just stuck it in there it's auto going to measure it and I missed there we go now I got it inserted so I just bent the lead out of whack but there you can see it's uh, practically spot on 4.8 uh, picofarad this is rated for 4.7 picofarad so pretty much spot on right there whereas the other meter had no hope of measuring it at all so this goes uh, does really well for very low capacitance and it auto reads it it can also auto read resistance or capacitance uh, or inductance and I bent the crap out of that lead because I didn't insert it properly but in any case there we go now when it comes to these larger capacitors though so this is an LCR meter I really like this meter so capacitance we want to make sure it's discharged there's no power to this rail and I'm going negative rail to negative rail to make sure it is discharged and let's uh, let's zoom back so that we can see the number when we insert it and uh, there we go hopefully I won't bend the crap out of this one too there we go and so again it's the 1000 microfarad but now it's measuring it under a frequency so the the uh, plates of this the two conductive areas separated by an insulator 
each conductive area is attached to each lead and they don't uh, conduct through each other they just build up charges next to each other and they're rolled up though kinda like an inductor and so this meter it's uh, doing one kilohertz so it's changing the voltage direction a thousand times a second and we can change that so let's go to a higher frequency so 10 kilohertz and uh, we should see the capacitance goes down a little and uh, I don't know why we're not getting anything maybe it's going too fast now we'll go to a hundred Hertz and this number is probably slightly higher but it looks like it's changing uh, direction a little too fast so so that's 120 Hertz 1 kilohertz okay it went down a little bit so this does not like charging and discharging too quickly it looks like that's 10 kilohertz so let's uh, look at inductance so it says 0.38 micro henry so we can look at a number of things with this and I'm surprised it's not getting any capacitance at all so this uh, probably would not be a good component for high frequencies so there's the uh, resistance so not, not a lot of resistance but it notices uh, inductance and uh, so in any case that's interesting I wasn't expecting that and uh, so in any case so this is pretty straightforward you just stick the capacitor in as you can see since it tested under frequency it's uh, better for measuring these very low values so picofarad is one trillionth of a farad so very very small this is probably my smallest value capacitor and there are numbers written on it but uh, this video is long enough I'm not going to talk about that anymore there is a code ultimately the code tells you its value in picofarad so it says 4.7 usually there's another number after it and uh, so if it's like 471 that tells you 47 plus 1 zero for 470 picofarad and it just works that way the third digit is the uh, multiplier or the number of zeros you add after it but it's in picofarads a very small amount so in any case I'm gonna end it there uh, thanks for watching I will see you in the next video